Hello everybody, um, my name is Miss Day and I lead on uh, reading across the school at Admiral Nelson School. Um, recently we uh, launched a parent reading meeting on Tuesday the 11th of October uh, in the school building where we invited parents in uh, to update all of you on our progress with reading, on our plans going forward this year in terms of student reading and also just to um, put names to faces so that you could get to know some of us um, and understand our roles within the school and uh, why we are pushing reading so much uh, this year. Um, really sorry to those of you who weren't able to attend. Um, lots of people got in touch asking for a recording of this meeting to be made available. Um, so I am just um, doing that for you now um, so that you can view this um, at in your own time and just catch up with what was covered during the meeting. So here goes. Um, the first thing that uh, we covered, um, we started with uh, giving you a list of book suggestions that were top rated by our students last year. Uh, this was on the back of uh, some of the parent surveys that we did last year, where um, parents said that they really struggled with being able to think of good books that their kids would be interested in. Uh, so what we've done quite a lot of over this year is we've analysed uh, the data um, from when our st students take um, and read books, um, they have to rate them after they finished reading the book. Um, and we've just looked for the books that were rated the highest um, out of the ones that were read. And as of July last year, these were the 10 highest rated books uh, for teenagers to be reading. So um, I know we had lots of requests again on the back of the, um, the data that we, the uh, questionnaire that we sent out to parents uh, last week. Um, loads of people got in touch saying they just don't know what to get uh, their child to read. So these 10 books are, if your child hasn't read these, these are ones that students are saying they're really enjoying. Uh, so please do feel free to uh, um, encourage your student or your child to take these books out from our library um, or alternatively um, buy them for your own home. Um, but obviously we can support with that um, by providing them through the library so that it's cheaper. Um, so in the meeting, um, we talked a lot about the importance of reading and we did a little bit of hands up and just got thinking about some of the data uh, nationally that um, means that reading is so, so important for us. So the first thing that we shared with parents was this number, uh, which is um, 1,483,300. And we asked parents to think about what that number meant. And that number is the gap in the amount of words that a child knows before starting reception, so at age four, between those who were read to and those who weren't, okay? So it's not necessarily, obviously, the words that they can read, but it's the vocabulary they have, the words that they know, the way that they can express themselves. So it's a huge amount of words um, between the student, the children um, who, who um, have been read to and those who haven't. And obviously, we're not primary school, we're secondary school, and all that happens for a child is if they come up without having those words, the gap just gets bigger the older that they get. Um, and so when they turn up to us at secondary school, uh, we have a bigger job to do to try to bridge that gap, address that gap and fix it, um, which is why we're pushing so much on reading. Um, also, just uh, interesting for you to know, um, on on this statistic, um, how many children in the UK do not own a single book? Was it 1 in 50, 1 in 75, 1 in 46 or 1 in 33? Um, the correct answer was 1 in 33. So uh, no different for our school. We have exactly the same uh, issues in our school with um, 1 in 33 students uh, not owning books at home. Um, so you can see why it's so important for us um, as um, teachers, but also um, um, as parents uh, to be trying to uh, support our children with with having access to books and access to reading, um, you know, because reading is such an important thing, so important to accessing the world these days. There's very few jobs you can do without being able to read. Um, and so we've got to try to support our kids with that, um, especially those who don't have books at home. Um, and then um, this was the final um, little st statistic that we shared. 
uh, the percentage of 15 year olds who have a reading age of 12 year olds of, a, of 12 years old this is nationally okay so um, nationally across the country 15% of 15 year olds have a reading age of 12 years old and our school is no different um, our current year 10 um, when they were in um, year 9 last year 14.4% of them had a reading age of the age of 10 or lower so when they were all about 13 years old they had a reading age of 10 or lower um, and the reason why this is so important um, a guy called Alex Quigley who uh, Basically, his whole career is based around um, children and their reading. He's um, a really important figure in terms of um, data and stuff that he collects to do with reading and reading in schools and how we can improve reading for children. He noticed that a gap of three years or more between a child's reading age and their actual age has a significant impact on their achievements, um, both within school and later life. So what we're talking about when we talk about that word achievements, we're talking about uh, GCSE results, um, getting that pass grade that means that they can then go on to the college courses that they want and they can um, and, and get on and get the jobs that they want. And, and by later life, we're meaning um, having the qualifications they need to be able to do a job that they want to do. Um, if you've got a child who is 16 and they are, if there's a gap of, of three years between that age and their, and their reading age, they struggle then in lots of aspects of life in terms of um, being able to access work, being able to access um, therefore money and all those kinds of things. So this is kind of a, a rolling thing, okay? Um, if we can try to help that and if we can try to support those kids that have that reading age that is lower than their actual age, and um, if we can try to bridge that gap and, and support those kids through that, um, then hopefully we're setting them up to um, achieve and, and to um, be successful within their academic achievements at school, but also within their jobs um, as they get older and also with their access to the world. You know, they need to be able to read to be able to access so much within society um, with everything being so led by words. So I'm um, just to introduce um, who we are. Um, my name, talking to you now, is Rosanna Day. Um, my role is Curriculum Development development in English and also Whole School Reading. So uh, my job is to plan most of the curriculum that we teach the students in English, um, what topics they learn and how they learn it. But I'm also in charge of um, pushing reading across the school and trying to improve um, students' engagement with reading um, and success with reading. Um, we also have Georgina Rolls leading on reading with me. Um, her main role is Accelerated Reader, which is our uh, computer programme um, to do with reading. And I'll explain a little bit more about what that is in a second. Um, and the, t the two of us work alongside uh, Catherine Green, who is the head of English, senior leader in English. Um, and she kind of line manages both of us and um, supports us with both of our roles. So um, our vision for reading this year um, in terms of what we want to achieve, we want to make sure that reading and literacy is at the heart of everything that we do and whether all students are engaged, um, whether they are boys, whether they have special needs, uh, whether they are um, come from uh, lower income families or uh, families that struggle uh, financially, um, we want to make sure that all um, children have the same opportunities and all are being treated equally. Uh, we want to make sure that all teachers, no matter what subject they teach, whether they're a maths teacher, whether they're a PE teacher, whether they're a science teacher, uh, are equipped to support the weakest readers in their subjects so that they feel more successful, not just in English, but across the board. And we also want to make sure that we support our weakest readers, those ones with the lowest reading ages, so that they are able to um, succeed in later life um, and they're not held back in their lives uh, through their reading okay we wouldn't want reading to be a factor that impacts their success in whatever it is that they want to do and um, would want to remove that barrier for them um, so that's our vision um, in terms of um, statistically and in terms of uh, why we are doing this um, in terms of obviously we are a school we do get judged on on progress of students we get judged on exam results um, and actually it's interesting that having good literacy and reading skills actually the subjects that this most affects 
our um, maths, um, science and history, um, more so than English literature, which we thought was really interesting. Um, the GL schools, which is a, a team of schools across Hampshire that um, sort of work together to analyse student data, uh, ran this study, um, which, show, um, which looked at the reading age of students and then their outcomes at GCSE and their exam results. And they actually found that um, the strongest correlation was between subjects like maths and science. Um, so, so important that we're pushing this, not just from, uh, to support with our English results, um, but also to support with um, every subject and your children's success in every subject. If they can improve their reading in, um, if they can improve their reading, then hopefully their other subjects will get easier too. Um, and one of the main reasons, reasons for that is because the exam papers these days are very wordy, uh, very long written questions. You know, the maths papers, some of the most difficult questions are the ones where there's quite a lot of sentences and quite a lot of reading involved before you actually get to the maths. Um, and if the students are reading the paper and they can't read the words and they don't understand the question, they're never going to be able to do the maths. Um, and I guess that applies as well for later life and with work and all of those kinds of things. So, so important that we're pushing this, not just because we're English teachers, but because it helps them in every single subject. So just so that you are aware, if you're a year seven parent um, and you haven't um, attended anything like this before, um, we started building on this last year on the back of COVID um, and noticing that students reading had really suffered and that students had really struggled, especially our children from disadvantaged families that maybe uh, didn't have the access to books or um, the materials needed to support them with their education while they were at home. Um, we noticed that reading was a massive issue. Um, so that's what one of the reasons why we launched um, such a big push on reading. Um, last year, what we were doing, uh, we held uh, parent Zooms every half term where we worked with parents, gathered feedback, um, learned from parents about where these struggles were with reading um, and just basically got some parent feedback and built a kind of team together, which we tried to really build on. Um, we also introduced, um, uh, well, reintroduced or relaunched Accelerated Reader, which is a reading programme that I'll talk about in a second. Um, which um, kind of suffered all over the COVID pandemic because although we've been doing it for a couple of years, um, students had forgotten how to use it, parents didn't know about it because obviously they were all at home and they didn't know what they were doing. So we had a real big launch on that um, to get it back and established again within the curriculum. Um, we've also put video guides onto the website for how to use Accelerated Reader. Uh, those videos are still available. So um, please do, once you've finished watching this, have a little look through the reading section of the website and you'll see that everything that we did last year is still there, including all of the guides on how to use Accelerated Reader and what that is. And we also, also pushed reading clubs, um, which we uh, launched. Um, wasn't such a great uptake on those, so we've come back this year and um, we've got Mr Ringrow running the Dragon Slayer Club uh, this year, which is all about um, using um, different types of, of books, uh, mainly like mythical creatures and that kind of style, legendary kind of style of, of books, um, and little bits of writing to inspire making a, um, a board game. Um, so we're kind of tying that together to make it kind of more creative sort of approach to reading. So if anyone is interested in that this year, please do see Mr Ringway because we've had great uptake on that, um, getting lots and lots of students involved this year. Uh, we've also launched competitions, we've had prizes for the best engagement with reading. Um, we're not just awarding the students who um, are really, really good readers. Um, we're trying to make, it sh make sure that the prizes um, sort of tackle every single type of reader. So we reward the, really, um, the ones who are really keen. Um, we reward the ones who are just reading anyway and who are brilliant. We, you know, they get that, that, that recognition and that, um, engage and that um, status and they get that kind of prize anyway, but we're also rewarding uh, those who read the most words, those who get the highest scores. We get rewarding those who have taken the most quizzes um, and passed the most quizzes. And um, all of the prizes tie in with your child's reading age. So it's um, not that 
only the students that are really, really great readers that will get prizes. It will be based on where your child is at. So um, a child that struggles with reading, that has read um, two books but passed the quizzes on them and done really well on them, they're just as likely to get a prize as somebody who reads a long novel and, and reads, you know, 250,000 words in one book. They're just as likely. We look at it holistically and we look at the kids that are properly engaging um, and, and reward them that way. Uh, we also, if you didn't know, um, the Year 7 um, project that was run at the end of Year 6 about Lost in Dreamland, uh, the novel by Ross Welford, uh, that was a scheme of learning, a topic that was planned alongside Admiral Lord Nelson School. So um, all the primary schools in the city were supposed to do that topic. Um, and then the first topic when Year 7 started in Admiral was that topic. So we kind of worked with primary schools to create that kind of transition element um, to kind of bridge that gap so that students had a book that they were reading that they then brought forward and were looking at in Admiral as well. So those are some of the things that we worked on last year. This year, what we are doing, we are continuing to develop the Accelerated Reader Programme. Uh, there is going to be a huge focus on um, pushing uh, the disengaged readers that we have in our school, really trying to find ways of getting them engaged and supporting parents with that um, and, and offering our support where we can um, to try and get some of those more disengaged readers into reading, which I know is such a difficult thing when we're battling phones and Xbox and social media, it's really difficult to, to, to keep students engaged in books. Um, we're also really wanting to intervene with our um, struggling readers, so the ones that are those lowest level readers who just really, really struggle. And we're going to be trying really hard with those this year to try and get them um, that intervention so that they can feel that they're making some success in their reading. And we're going to be uh, doing that alongside uh, prizes and rewards um, for those who do engage and those who do make progress. Um, we're asking for parent support again on this. We've sent a parent um, quiz out already, a questionnaire to ask for ideas, suggestions, things that parents um, are after. Um, we have started to analyse that data and I am just in the process of putting together a list of FAQs which came from the questionnaire uh, just to uh, share with you some of the questions that came from the questionnaire and things that parents would like this year. So I'll put that as a separate post once I've recorded this. Um, we're offering more personalised support for students who are struggling with their reading. Um, so we've um, employed a phonics teacher, which is a primary school teacher this year, Mr Langmore. Um, he's trained in uh, phonics, which is um, a strategy for supporting uh, primary school children with their reading, something that we wanted to bring into secondary school because of the fact that we've got some students who struggle so much with reading at the moment. Um, so he's been employed to help us um, learn some strategies from primary school um, that uh, primary school teachers deliver with their students who struggle the most. So um, we're in the process of training up all of our teachers in that so that we all feel a little bit more skilled to support those students who are really struggling. And we're also going to be introducing or have introduced a reading tracker uh, so that parents and teachers can monitor student reading, reading ability and also engagement in reading more easily. And I'll talk about that with you in a second. And we've also brought in a programme called Read Write Gold, which is uh, installed on every single Chromebook, uh, school Chromebook and the student Chromebooks, um, which is to support students with when they're doing any kind of reading task on their Chromebooks. Um, so I'm just going to go through some of the things that I've just listed there in a little bit more detail now so that you can understand um, what they mean and um, what we're going on about. So the Accelerated Reader Programme, which I know I've banged on about a lot so far, um, this is a reading programme that is done um, over the, the uh, computers. And what happens is at the start of every year seven and eight and nine academic year, um, the students do a reading test, um, which basically analyzes uh, their, quest, their results, their answers, and from the way that they answer and the time they take and the different things that they do, the, read, the, the program is able to work out um, how old their reading brain is. And their reading brain can be a lot younger or a lot older than what they actually are. Um, and that's important because sometimes a book that is aimed at a child's um, actual age can be too difficult for them in terms of their reading age. 
And that's a problem because if you're reading something that is too difficult for you, you can't make progress because you don't access enough of the book. You don't know enough of the words. It's too difficult. Therefore, you can't move forward. The same in the opposite. If you're reading a book that is way too easy for you, you're never going to get better at your reading because you're not challenging yourself. You're not growing your brain. And so therefore, the Accelerated Reader Programme works out what the child's reading age is and then tells um, the child and teacher and the parents as well what level books um, they should be going for and what kind of books um, they should pick. Um, and then what happens is in our school library, we have um, our books organised into different sort of reading brain ages set out in the library. So when your child is told that you have a reading age of 11, they know that they go to the section in the library that is for the students that have a reading brain age of that. OK, um, they're not they don't get the, they don't get told reading brain ages in terms of a book won't say on it. This is a book aimed at the reading brain of 11 year olds. Um, it will have like a code on it that means that so there's no like shame or embarrassment. That, you know, there's no kind of acknowledgement um, visually that they're going to a specific section of the library. They have different codes that they link. Um, and then what they do is they read those books, they choose a book from our selection. Um, also, um, if your child um, doesn't want any of the books in the library, if they think they're really limiting, um, we can order more books in. So please do speak to your, um, get your child to speak to their English teacher or to the librarian. And the librarian is more than happy to order books in that your, your child might be interested in. So please don't feel like you're limited just by what is in the library on that particular day. Um, our librarian is brilliant and she will order in books that your child might be interested in if that's something that suits. We would also say that, yes, within our English lessons, we would want students to be reading accelerated reader books, um, books from our library. But in their own home reading, we don't want to be limiting them. Um, we know that the, the books at the, at the right age um, are the best ones for getting their reading brain to grow and to get older. But we also understand the need to feel free, the need to feel engaged, the need to enjoy what you're reading and want to read about things you're interested in. So please don't feel like this has to limit your child. Um, we would suggest that they read the, their accelerated reader book alongside a book of their choice at home if that helps keep them engaged. We'd rather they were reading than, than not, okay? So don't feel like this has to limit your child. But effectively, the accelerated reader programme uh, suggests books for your child that suit their reading age. They read, they choose a book which they read. When they finish it, they do a quiz. And then if they pass the quiz or get a certain amount on the quiz, um, then they sort of effectively tick that off. Their reading age will effectively have gone up and then they'll be told, right, go to this next level book. And basically it just builds up through the different books. And what that means is as from a teacher's perspective, we can go into the Accelerated Reader Programme, we can view the student results, we can see the kind of marks that they're getting, we can see how many questions they got right, we can uh, look at the vocabulary that was in the book, um, words that they might have struggled with. We get loads of access to loads of data, which then helps us to assess how that child has performed and where they might need help. We deliver this within our English lessons. Uh, remember that our lessons are now 100 minutes long. So at the start of every English lesson, uh, students will read their accelerated reader books for 15 minutes. Um, and if they finish their book in that time, they will take a quiz during that time um, and then go and choose themselves a new book. Um, but every lesson is 15 minutes at the start of each lesson. Um, just as a reminder, we're also expecting them to complete a minimum of 30 minutes of reading a week at home um, as part of their English homework. And that is a lot logged using their trackers, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, we set a minimum expectation of 30 minutes of reading a week at home. So that could be three lots of 10 minutes across a week. It could be one slot of 30 minutes. It really depends on your child and um, you know how much they engage and how, how much they can concentrate. Um, obviously, we would love for that to be more, you know, 20 minutes a day um, would be so much better and mean that they get through so much more reading and make a lot more progress. But we understand we're working with young people um, who are battling against all other sorts of things, you know, football, social media, Xbox, all those things that make reading uh, less attractive. So um, great if your child is a is a really, really keen reader. 
um, and, and will read for 20 minutes a day or more. That's amazing. And we do appreciate that not every child is like that and that it can be a battle for them to even do 10 minutes um, three times a week. So it really does depend on your child and um, we'd rather they, they do um, a minimum of 30 minutes than, than none at all. OK, we also expect you, um, about two quizzes to be completed every half term to show that they've been engaging within their reading. But again, it is personal to every child. If your child is a really, really uh, keen reader and has chosen a massive thick book, you know, Lord of the Rings or something like that, which is millions and millions of words in, then um, we understand that they might not get that book finished um, in a half a term or they might, um, you know, be struggling to get that done in, in the time frame. In that instance, it's absolutely fine for them not to have done a quiz by half term um, and, and Obviously, teachers will be aware, like I have quite a few kids in my class um, in that kind of situation, and I'm just aware that they read loads and that they're taking part in it. And I'll just be really uh, proud of them when they do finish that book because um, it's a real achievement. OK, um, so equally, though, um, we might have kids that pick a tiny, tiny thin book, have only five or six pages in and there, you know, two quizzes every half term probably wouldn't be enough for them. We'd be thinking, you know, more like five or six because of the books being so, so tiny. Um, so it really does depend on the child. It depends on, um, you know, the books. Um, but the most important thing is that they are engaging. So that two quizzes every half term is, is very much um, an average and it will be different for every child that takes part in this. Um, just wanted to share with you what your role will be in terms of this. Um, we were finding last year that it was quite difficult to uh, sometimes track very closely with parents the reading that was taking place. So as part of your child's reading homework, um, they are asked to get you to sign their reading tracker, which looks like the document um, on the screen. Um, it is glued at the back of their pink book or their green book, depending on what colour book they've been given. Um, and it's just a space for them to write down the reading that they're doing um, and when the day that they've done that reading and how long they read for. Um, so it's just a way of us more easily being able to track the reading that's being done at home. Uh, so we're asking for that to be completed with parents um, to track their reading. Um, on the right hand side of the document, um, we've also, this is called a reading rubric. Uh, the guy, Alex Quigley, who I talked about um, earlier, um, he came up with this on the back of um, all the research that he's done into children's reading. And he kind of split children's reading ability into five strands. Um, and you can see the five strands going downwards, things like phrasing, inference, pace, smoothness. And then along the top, he uh, grades the, um, the skills, OK, so from level one up to level four. Um, this is something that teachers are using this year to track when they're listening to your children reading. Um, and there's space on the tracker you'll see for teachers to sign um, with when they've listened to your child read, how they've got on and with um, what they've listened to and what they've noticed. But we thought that if we made this available to parents in the back of English books, it also might support you at home with uh, conversations you can be having with your child about their reading. So, for example, things like um, the, um, phrasing, um, you know, thinking about where they pause for breath. Are they pausing at the correct place? Are they um, taking notice of punctuation to support them with where to pause and things like that? Um, just thought having that for parents at home might be useful in terms of starting conversations for parents about how you could support your child with um, setting um, kind of uh, targets for that your child's reading you know you know if you've noticed that they ignore full stops then it might be just pausing and saying well what happened you know there's a, there's a little dot there what does that mean like why have you, why have you ignored that like what does that mean when you see that it might just support you with that so we, we thought this would be a good thing to share with parents so it is at the back of English books um, and hopefully we'll support you a little bit more with personalising those conversations with your children. Um, so um, hopefully that is helpful. I'll also attach a copy of this to the website so that you can see it as in a bit bigger um, so that you can see it better if it's um, for whatever reason, if your child hasn't got one. Thank you.
the main purpose of Read and Write for Gold is accessibility. Um, accessibility means um, ability to access material, ability to understand things that they have been set. Um, so basically being able to access the work. Um, we know that in some subjects they work, students work so much more on Chromebooks now. Um, the whole world is moving to screens. Um, and we knew that we needed to um, give students an option, particularly students who struggle massively with their reading. We needed to give them an option to support them when they're doing that. Um, the whole purpose of Read and Write for Gold is to give these students confidence and ultimately success um, within every subject so that they don't leave their lessons feeling um, like they have failed. They have that sense of success. So this is what this programme is for. Um, so this will work on um, Google Docs, Google Slides, it will also work on Google Chrome, so on internet articles. Um, so most things that are on your child's Chromebook can be accessed using Read and Write for Gold. And basically in the top right hand corner along the taskbar, you will see in your student's Chromebook a little purple jigsaw like the one on the screen. And all students have to do is click that little purple jigsaw and then this screen will come up. Once they have clicked the little purple jigsaw um, button, um, the bar along the, um, on the screen will come up and it'll come up along the top of their screen. Um, and this just has loads of different functions that Read and Write for Gold does. So you'll see on the right hand side of the bar, there's loads of little functions. They can highlight bits of the text, they can select bits, they can um, click on bits and make it different colours if that helps them. So let's say it was a task where they had to go through and I don't know, find all the, if it was a science lesson and they had to find all the information that was to do with a particular experiment, they could do that in certain colours to make it easier to read. But um, also to help them with any learning that they do at home or with any vocabulary they don't know. There's also um, some these three things that we think are the most important. There is a dictionary option, so all they need to do is just double click on a word in the text that they're reading that they don't understand. Click on dictionary and the app will search across the internet for the definition for that word. So that's quite helpful. The only thing we find with dictionary definitions is that sometimes the dictionary definition in itself can be hard to understand. So the other option is a picture dictionary. Um, the picture dictionary will give you some pictures to support the definition, which might help a child understand what the word means. So for example, if you were learning about uh, kings and queens and you wanted to know what the word tyrant meant, you hadn't heard it before, it means an evil leader, you click the picture dictionary and it might come up with a picture of a king, but then a frowning face or something that kind of simplifies the definition of the um, word and just helps them get some access to what that word might mean. Also, if you click the ear you will, and then click play, you will see that the um, program will read either words or even the whole text out to you if you need, particularly for our students with SEND. Um, this supports them with any independent work they do because we know some students we have that have um, a reader in exams, have someone read the text out to them. Uh, but when they're at home doing home learning, um, they may not have access to that. So having this app here that will read the text out to them support them with some of those words and with some of that vocabulary that is difficult. We would always say that it is better to have a person read it out to you because obviously this is a robotic kind of um, programme. So um, Read Write Gold doesn't pause for things like punctuation marks, doesn't read with expression, but just having the words read can support those students um, if they ha don't have access to an adult at home when they're doing um, work from home. So we just thought this was important to share with you so that you know that this is a facility for your child should they need it um, to support with their learning um, and please do encourage them to use it. They have access to this on every single um, screen, every single Chromebook and computer within the school building and every student Chromebook um, that they have paid through uh, paid for through school has this program loaded on it so please do make use of it. Hey everybody um, these are our combined efforts as parents and teachers for the year. Um, we'd really like to see you guys reading with your children regularly um, we will be doing the same within school and um, we're really going to be paying attention to those students that struggle with their reading particularly and making sure that we're getting in and listening to those children read as regularly as we can but obviously that is difficult when there's only one of us and there's 30 in a class um, but we will be endeavouring to make sure we try to do that as much as we possibly can but obviously your support with that at home is greatly appreciated. 
Um, please do make sure that you sign and check your child's reading log, your reading tracker, and make sure that 30 minutes a week of reading is done as an absolute minimum. And we would love to see a reward praise um, from home in order to motivate children to read. Um, we know that reward and praise really does work, even if it's just, you know, every time they read, they get to have an extra 20 minutes on their Xbox, for example, can work. I have put sanctions there as well. Some children do respond better to sanctions than they do to reward and praise. So um, obviously, you know your child better, but it could be as simple as you're not going out to play football until you've done 10 minutes of reading. Um, so it's kind of a bit more of a strictness around that. But you know your child and you'll know what will work for them and what won't. Um, we're also launching the Parent Reader Programme, um, which we're just getting started now um, from the back of the meeting that was on Tuesday, the 11th of September. Um, so the 11th of October, we had um, a number of parents who offered really kindly to give up their time who are coming into school um, during the working week to support with reading of some of our most uh, challenged uh, readers who really struggle and find reading difficult. We're just in the process of getting that set up um, and just in the process of getting those parent readers in and getting a timetable created. Um, but if you weren't there on the evening and you think that you would be interested in that, uh, please do email reading at lns.co.uk and either myself or Miss Rolls or Mrs Green will get that and get back to you. Um, we'd love to have as many parent readers as we can. Um, obviously you'll need to be DBS checked but we will organise that through the school building um, so um, please do um, get in touch if that's something you'll be interested in. Um, you'll see on here that we wanted your feedback. We have done the survey now and we've got the data back and analysed the results. I'm just about to put together a um, list of F, uh, um, questions that were asked by parents, which I'll also put up onto the school website so you can see what our response is to some of the questions asked. Unfortunately, I won't be able to answer every single question because we had um, tons and tons of questions, um, but the ones that um, were most frequent, I will um, make sure that I put something together so that you can just view the feedback. Um, and um, so that you know what's coming up. Uh, one of the main things that people were after was support um, in terms of other sessions we're going to run. So just so you are aware, just like we did last year, every half term, we're going to be running a parent reader session over Zoom. Um, probably do another one at the end of the year in person just to evaluate how the year has gone. But the next few will be over Zoom. And what we have done is we've created a timetable of uh, sessions that um, were most asked for. Um, one of the ones that was most asked for was how do I support my student with special educational needs to read effectively? Um, have you got any decent reading strategies? Um, how do I support my child with dyslexia and with autism were particular ones that we got lots of questions about. So um, that will be the one that we will be doing first um, just to support those parents who asked that because we did get quite a few uh, questions about that. So I think that's one we'll do first. Um, but I haven't got a date for that yet, so I will, um, as soon as I've um, sat and gone through and, and, and written everything up, I'll then check the diary and see when we can do that. But again, that will be a Zoom and that will be recorded and we'll make sure it's available on the website for parents that um, can't attend. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. I'm sorry for the delay in getting this out to you, um, just having to record it separately rather than doing it on the night. Um, because obviously the first one was in person, not over Zoom. Um, so I um, apologise for the delay, but um, I hope it's helpful and I look forward to hearing from you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye.